Hello and good afternoon. Welcome everyone to another edition of Adobe Live. My name is Robert Ranitsky and I'll be your host today. And it's actually a premiere for myself because it's my first host event, um, being a host uh, in an English speaking stream for Adobe Live. So I'm super honored and, and it's a huge pleasure to reach an even bigger audience than in my native tongue, which is German, obviously. So today I'm super happy to welcome a very talented designer, animator, creative, um, who runs by the name Sebastian Pfeiffer, um, AKA Everfresh. And uh, hello, Sebastian. Hey, thanks for having me. Of course, of course, it's a pleasure. Um, first of all, let me see who's in the chat and say hello to everyone. Um, I see Gareth here, Andreas, uh, Sean is here, Oliver, Stuart, hello everyone. It's so nice to see. I'm sure you're all smiling. Uh, behind your computer. It's always weird to talk into a camera and not see any reaction, but I'm sure everyone is having a blast and a good day and is enjoying this. Um, it's going to be a packed uh, one and a half hours today. Uh, I can't wait to get started. Um, a few housekeeping rules. If you are watching on YouTube, feel free to hop on over to Behance where we have the chat. Why is that um, cool to do so? Because then we can read your questions. If you have any questions, um, any comments, feedback, anything you'd like to ask um, Sebastian or myself, I'll, I'll monitor the chat um, as we go ahead and I will post uh, the questions and um, bounce it back and forth for you guys. So um, excited to, to get going and um, a little bit about um, Sebastian and he is... Um, He's, 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 we also became friends a while ago, um, back then when there were real events uh, where you could actually meet physically, um, in the good old days, so to say. And um, I saw some of his work uh, previously, but never, never had a face to it, really. And um, uh, we were at a conference here in Germany and we both were giving a talk. And then uh, we ended up, you know, chatting to each other, and I was uh, congratulating him into the fantastic presentation and to his uh, amazing work. And uh, so we ended up uh, becoming friends. Um, so it was that um, I decided to to have Sebastian here on the stream. Um, Sebastian, um, tell us a little bit about yourself. What if if you know if you are like. What, what do you say to your to your grandma or to you know to to friends that just pop up in an elevator like what is it that you do you know like what what do you do like that's that's the most complicated uh, question to answer usually um, if there's you know people that don't know what you do it's kind of hard to explain um, if they're not uh, familiar to the field itself so, uh, I usually say I'm a motion graphics designer and then people say, yeah, but what is that? And then I, I try to tell them that I make things move, all kinds of things, and that my, my specialty or my focus is on character animation. And then I just, you know, say like, you know the, the the people at Pixar that make the, the 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 characters do what they do, and I do that not for Pixar but for like advertising and all mm -hmm. kinds of stuff. So yeah. So cartoony, cartoony kind of animations, and uh, you make things move basically. And um, technically, you trigger emotions, I would say, because um, for for most of your your work that I've seen. Um, I I was either giggling, laughing, or just being like completely flabbergasted by what I've just what I've just seen and um, uh, basically you trigger emotions and I think that is that is also a good way to describe um, what what you are doing um, which which is technically a, a good thing to do you know to that's you know, actually not just... the, the the best compliment you can you could uh, have given to me right now so you're welcome <laughs> <laughs> so um, before we get going um, maybe maybe I think there's a saying images you know say more than words can do so um, why don't we why don't we run your show reels so that people can actually see what we are talking about and yeah, sure. how amazing your work looks like so uh, by the way it's from 2019 last year I was crazy busy so the, sh, the latest anyone. projects no. are not in there no one knows so, yeah. all right let's see
<laughs> that's what I would say. Um, to be honest, people are freaking out in the in the chat. Um, Stuart is saying, "Oh my word!" Oliver says, "Wow, uh, so awesome!" Goosebumps, uh, mind blown, um, awesome, amazing. So uh, you get some really nice comments, and just looping it back to you, so you know um, that it is well received. And and to be honest. Um, Sebastian is like one of the most talented guys and friends that I know. Like when I saw his stuff, I was like, are you serious? Like what is, what in the world is going on? Um, for someone that also works in animation and motion graphics, I just know how much work it takes and how much passion and also an understanding for composition, timing, um, framing, color, everything. I mean, it's just so spot on. So, um, Yeah, I can't wait. I can't wait to to have, to the stream and also learn from you and, and see how how you do things. Um, so uh, there was this question. Um, it looks like there's also some Cinema 4D integration today um, with After Effects. Yes, absolutely. Um, a lot of it is actually based in Cinema 4D, which is then taken into After Effects. Um, that is a workflow that I use a lot as well. Um, so this is a very common thing. C4D works very well with After Effects and. Um, Sebastian is going to share um, a couple of his technical as well as creative approach. It's going to be like a 50-50 masterclass. I'm just doing some expectation management here. So he's going to talk about his creative process. And then we're also going to dive into some of the technicalities and how things are uh, done in detail. But before we get going, um, I wanted to show you a few things um, from my end talking about Cinema 4D and After Effects because my experience is that a lot of people actually don't know that they do already have a copy of Cinema 4D, Cinema 4D Lite, that is, if they have After Effects. That is, a, that is like, a, like a hidden little secret out there. So as many people I talk to, they're like, what, I have Cinema 4D? I'm like, yeah, well, you have the Lite version, but you have a version of Cinema 4D that you can get going with. So how can you get going with? If we are here in Cinema 4D, the easiest way is to go to File, New, and then you go to Maxon Cinema 4D file. Then it will ask you whether you want to um, save that file. And I just say, okay, I'm just going to save it here. I'm just going to create that file. So that file is being created. While this file is being created, it will open up Cinema 4D Lite or the full version of Cinema 4D if you have that. And then you can get going with 3D animation and basically everything 3D related and transfer it over to After Effects. So you might be wondering, where's the catch? Um, Cinema 4D, of course, is a hugely complex application. Um, you can do anything from animation, modeling, texturing, lighting. Like it's it's literally, if you think After Effects is complex, wait till you get started with um, Cinema 4D. Um, Sebastian is smiling. I think I think he agrees. Um, so basically, you have to you have to know a lot of things. So that's why it might seem intimidating. Um, this is also one of the reasons why I would like to highlight. Um, the fantastic tutorials um, there are for the Cinema 4D Lite version that you can access in Cinema 4D Lite. If you um, go into this buttons here, you can open up some of the fantastic tutorials. And um, there's a few limitations in terms of the tool set. So you can't do everything that the full retail version can do, um, but it's good enough to uh, get going. So whatever you you create here, let's, uh, let's just quickly create a, a super complex cube. Um, and I'm just going to save that. Um, saving that and going back to After Effects, you can already see that the cube is already in here. So we can drag and drop this onto a new comp. And now you can see the exact same thing that you just created in, in Cinema 4D. So whatever whatever you do in C4D, if you, um, let me just um, push the zoom window out of place. Um, let me just create something like a landscape, for example. You know, you can make the landscape bigger, um, make it like this and have this this cube sitting there. I don't know, something like this. I mean, it's I, I won't, wanna, won't wanna do any modeling here, but if you go back to After Effects, you will quickly see there's a, there's a link between Cinema 4D and After Effects. You might be wondering, After Effects does have a 3D space. So how, like, what is going on here? Well, After Effects does have a 3D space. So you have the X and the, the, the X and the Y axis, but also the Z axis. But it's basically, I would say two and a half D. If you have a plane, you can rotate it and you can move it back and forth, but you can't model a face. Uh, you can't 
you can't create like a 3D character in, in After Effects. Um, so that's why there is this fantastic integration with um, Cinema 4D Lite. And you can also use the Cineware plugin to toggle between different rendering views. And there's also um, a little info that you need to know. You cannot render directly in Cinema 4D. So if you go back to Cinema 4D, you can render it here in the picture viewer, but you cannot save it from here. So you have to save it going through After Effects. Of course, you can take a screenshot, so that's a little hack, but um, technically um, you should go through After Effects to access your, your animation. And there's a few uh, wonderful um, samples included with Cinema 4D Lite, and I'm just gonna open up this one. You might be wondering, why is this interesting? So if I'm opening up this one and go back to Cinema 4D, um, you will see that this has a tune shader kind of look. So this is also, going right into what Sebastian is going to talk about uh, with this with this style. So uh, it's quite a fitting example. It's uh, it's created by my friend EJ Hassenfratz um, in the US. So he also is a very good um, designer and teacher. And you can see that this is actually a 3D, 3D shape, so to say. Okay, so you can really see that this is all um, coming together in um, a 3D way. You can spin around it. It has depth. It's not just flat. And uh, of course, you can you can save that out. And if you go back to After Effects, and um, let's launch that Play logo right here, you can scrub through, and you can see it will also carry over. And then, of course, you can change the view to um, see like a draft mode, and you can render that as well. So now it's rendering in After Effects or through After Effects in Cinema 4D. Don't ask me how; it's kind of voodoo but it works and it's just fantastic because there's things that you simply cannot do uh, with After Effects. But then again, there's things you cannot do in Cinema 4D that you can do in After Effects. So you, so you combine the best of both worlds. So if you want to do like a new camera, you can absolutely do that. Let me just do uh, like a wide angle camera, go in here and let's use the centered comp camera. And now watch this, if I move the camera, you will see that we also move in 3D space while the animation still can go on. So we could create like a camera animation um, in After Effects and play around with that. So I absolutely recommend giving it a try, um, playing around with Cinema 4D Lite um, just to get your, your baby steps going in Cinema 4D. Uh, watch some fantastic tutorials. There's some really good stuff out there on the web. And um, yeah, um, keep creating and create something fantastic. Um, this is not quite exactly the same workflow as um, Sebastian is doing in his work, but I'm sure that um, we will see a lot of glimpses from, from his um, amazing work. So Sebastian, um, how, how do you work usually? Like how much is Cinema 4D and how much is, is um, After Effects? It depends a bit on the project, of course. Um, it's, my, it's my favorite answer, it depends. So, um, <laughs> Um, for the, I would say for the most recent uh, projects, it would be like 60 to 70 percent uh, Cinema 4D and, mm -hmm. um, and the rest is After Effects. So I usually, mm -hmm. I do the, these animations with those uh, um, complex uh, morphings of shapes and stuff. Mm -hmm. And that's usually I... Um, I block out the rough shapes in in cinema because it's just mm -hmm. um, it just gives me a I, I can operate quicker in cinema than I can do in any other application. So um, I just block out the animation with uh, simple shapes. Also, I create my characters in in, in Cinema 4D. But anything else that's in there, like I block it out with simple shapes, then I. Um, then I render it out and, and just use it as a background plate and After Effects and draw over it uh, mm -hmm. frame by frame mostly. So it's quite tedious at times. But um, and I actually kind of it's a love hate relationship. I I um, I hate frame by frame animation because it's so tedious, but it's also like very rewarding because you can get you can get results. Um, you can't get with any other technique and you you have total freedom in what to do and you don't have to come up yeah. with like tricky uh um tricky motion graphics setups in, in 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 cinema that allow you to do that so um 
and yes. it also gives you this this super super nice feel uh you know like we used back in the days from cartoons you know like disney stuff and like tom and jerry yeah. and so it's and, not and super fluid yeah. it yeah. it it has it has this kind of analog and an organic look to it and it's it doesn't look too computer generated so um i think that that happens probably i suppose to um to you quite a lot of times when people see your work they they usually wouldn't think it's cinema 4d i mean some things are pretty obvious it's cinema 4d or, or 3d yeah, in general yeah, it's, it's, uh, but for others it looks like it's like a 2d hand-drawn thing but then you just you know come out and say well actually it is 3d <laughs> Yeah, that's that's always the nicest uh, um, thing that can happen if people actually think it's 2D. So then you know, okay, I've, I've done it right. Mm -hmm. So yeah, and that that happens. Uh, so why don't we? I mean, I'm, I think you you brought us a few more projects and and little short films that we can use to basically break down your process. So uh, with which one is it that you would like to start? Um. I would uh, like to start with a uh, uh, schizophrenia short, um, a little bit about that, if you don't uh, mind. It's, sure. Um, I did this one shortly after my uh, uh, after my cat died, and he was really my my best friend for 16 years, and and we. We had a very special relationship and I wanted to like somehow um, like um, preserve that in a, mm -hmm. um, in a piece. So um, I did that animation and it was, uh, um, I was totally blown away because um, this was the, the, the first and one and only of my videos that, that received a Vimeo staff pick. Mm -hmm. And it got like, um, uh, up to now it has like 56k views and it, um, and then there was like, um, it was exhibited uh, around the world several times in, uh, nice. for instance, Art Futura on Madrid and stuff like that. So it, 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 it feels very nice to, to, um, you know, to, to give my diseased cat that kind of legacy. You know, mm -hmm. like he's, he's, um, he is, I mean, it, it sounds, it, it sounds a bit weird, but he's like in the history books forever now. Mm -hmm. So, and that makes me really, really happy. And it makes it a very personal project as well, because, you know, you put a lot of passion into it and you don't do it because the client tells you to do it, but because it's your inner motivation to create something like that. Yeah, sure. Of course. It's um, cool. Yeah, it's my, it's, it's the piece that means the most. Uh, mm -hmm. for me it's 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 not like you know you get better over time so mm -hmm. and it's three years old so i wouldn't say it's my best from a technical standpoint but from like an like emotional. from an emotional standpoint yeah. it's right. it's it's uh, my most valued piece yeah. all right let's see it i can't wait so okay so nice wow thanks i i must i must be asking like what the hell like how in the world do you come up with these ideas of transitions and everything like uh, i mean for me transitions are like the is like is like the most fun the most rewarding thing if you pull off a good transition from a and b and uh, but that's also like the most stressful moment to you like when you have a brief and you want to go from this to there and like oh, how do i do that like yeah how how do you go about this the, the creative process in terms of like going into the mouth and coming out of the of the rear and i don't know like yeah, you... that, that that actually just i get asked that a lot and i don't really have an um have an answer to this it's just 
I would say it, it evolves. So mm -hmm. I, I just start doing things mm -hmm. in general. Like I don't, I often get asked, uh, do you do uh, storyboards for your projects? No, I don't. Mm -hmm. I never did any storyboarding in my life whatsoever. No so, scribble, no nothing? No, nothing. Um, I just dive into it and I just keep going and, and see where it takes me. Usually wow. I don't, I also don't really know the outcome of the piece when I started. So um, I don't have an end in mind, you know, like. So you, you don't have, have the, a, you, don't, you don't have the whole thing visually no, in, your, in your mind? No, playing? I just, I just have, I just have like maybe the first scene in mind and then I do it and then I, mm -hmm. I see where it takes me, you know, and Freestyle. to me, that, to me, that's, that's the most fun way of working because you you um yeah you get surprised by your mm -hmm. own work you know mm -hmm. when you do it and 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 you do something and then you think oh wow that's that's cool i, I couldn't have thought of that but it, wow, it yeah. happened you know and it's and and it's, it's a very rewarding feeling right i mean when you yeah It's, When you see it come to life in front of you, you go like, "Oh wow, okay, that's that's how that's what I that's what I thought." <laughs> yeah. Um, just just a quick uh, feedback on your uh, they uh, people are writing. Wow, fantastic! Um, Stuart is wondering where to even begin on the inspiration for that. So that's exactly what I was asking. Um, Daniela loves the transitions. Um, Emma says that the cat was so cool. Um, it is insane and freestyle creative. Um, so that's a little feedback for you right there. <laughs> Thanks. Um, yeah, where do the ideas come from? That's um, that's all, also a, a tricky question for me because um, there's no like there's different kind of sources. Like um, work of others, of course, is always mm -hmm. inspiring. Um, then there's like um, I get most of my ide ideas when I'm surrounded by water actually so um, mm -hmm. when I'm showering when I'm mm -hmm. uh, taking a dip in the pool or when I'm sitting by the pond or um, mm -hmm. on vacation when I'm sitting at the sea and staring to the ocean so so everything wears water around that's quite a um, that's quite a good inspiration to get like my inner juices flowing you know I, do you know that I, I actually it's true for me as well with with water, especially in the shower. Uh, it's it's ridiculous how many ideas are born in the shower. Um, uh, there's uh, I read some some behind the scenes stuff about that, um, like psychology wise and and um, basically you know science wise what 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 is behind that. And I, I read that, for example, that water in general being around water uh, like ponds or the sea is. It has kind of like a psychological cleansing, um, calming effect, um, which which gets the mind into into a creative mode. Whereas the shower is a combination of that plus the, you know, the being condensed in your in your shower and not having anything else, but you know, right. you water, you know, your body cleaning yourself, and and that's it. And then your mind starts to spin automatically. So that's. That's um, that's uh, it's proven uh, from a science uh, point of view. So that's very interesting that you that you feel the same in that regard. Um, questions are just flooding in right now. Um, people are asking how long does it take to complete such a project? For example, the the cat project. Um, of course, uh, answer as usual. It depends. But mm. um, this one, for instance, took. Um, Roughly, I would say two weeks, two and a half weeks, something around that. That is um, a quick turnaround, to be honest. Yeah, I'm I'm quite quick at character modeling and character rigging, so that doesn't usually like um, I model or I design and model a character in a day, and then I rig it in a day, and um, then mm -hmm. I start. Then I start animating for this short. There were two characters, so that alone would eat up like roughly two days. Mm -hmm. And um, yeah, and then I, I I start animating and I iterate and I, I go back and forth between uh, on Cinema 4D and, and After Effects and until everything is ready. Um, something like this around two weeks. And um, I usually also create the music for my pieces myself. Um, uh, 
for the Catsophrenia piece, for instance, um, I took uh, I took a beat from from another beat producer mm -hmm. uh, named You Soul, uh, quite a talented guy. And um, when I made this piece, I, I just I just dropped him a line. We didn't know each other, um, and I I showed him the animation um, and I said, Hey, I used your beat. Are your uh, it's it's a non commercial project. Are you fine with that? And um, mm -hmm. He, he was totally cool with it and he was happy even though I I kind of let's say I <laughs> I modified his uh, his speed quite a lot I mm -hmm. I um, I used a time reshaper on that to get those like like um, backwards forwards sounding stuff in there but he actually enjoyed it so um yeah nice um, Stuart is asking if you hit any dead ends, like if after a scene you have to go back and rethink it, or um, do you uh, need to get into the flow, or do you just push on and, and you make it work, or how, how does that uh, work for you? There's like, yes, I sometimes I run into dead ends, um, and that's usually when I uh, when I take a break from a project for uh, for too long. Mm -hmm. And then, like, I'm a, I'm a very, like, you know, like, I, I have so many interests and, and, and ideas and inspirations that um, if I let something sit for too long, I just lose interest in it. Mm -hmm. You know, like, then another idea has come to mind and then I, oh, no, I want to do that. Oh, and that is I, better. Oh, that is better. <laughs> just, yeah. And then I just skip it, you know, mm -hmm. and, and that like my 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 hard drive is like is is full of unfinished projects mm -hmm. so um w what you see from me is usually just the tip of the iceberg mm -hmm. i can imagine so daniela was asking um she loves your transitions and she would like to be taught on how to make transitions like that and personally she loves the the cat walking uh, um, from behind and uh the, you know you you come out of you know you know the what and then um she was asking if that is a 2d drawing um or how did you animate that um is it is it going to be i mean we're going to see some of the technicalities anyway so is it something that yeah. you're going to show anyway or is it something yeah that i'm going I'm, I'm going to show um a couple of transitions and how mm -hmm. i approach them it's cool. usually like um, what's always important is like um, rotation and, and and general directions of how things move. And if you mm -hmm. keep that going, and if you keep those those uh, 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 that momentum going, going from one to the other, and it rotates the same way, or it mm -hmm. it zooms in the same speed, and um, then you can. Uh, you can basically do anything and you have to you have to just experiment and be be creative with it and there's there's like also like no fixed technique i have on something um so uh, usually i just um i just try out what works um mm -hmm. f or for instance i also get asked a lot um like is your is your whole project is that all one scene or is it like um is it is it, is it split up is it is it like single elements it mm -hmm. depends it mm -hmm. sometimes it's one single scene and and everything is happening there and sometimes i have like 20 different tiny chunks i i then come together in after effects it, it, right it, it depends. I, I evaluate that with every project. I evaluate that that uh, uh, from scratch how I how I will approach mm -hmm. it. Um, there's no there's no rule to it. I don't like rules, not even the ones I set for myself. So I I, I don't. I I just you can't break rules, but you have to know the rules. So <laughs> yeah, but well, sometimes you don't even have to know the rules. Well, that's sometimes true. Sometimes you can just break it. You know, even it's it's funny no because. Rule. The, the way you describe it, it's it's um, it's a little bit opposite to to the way that I work. For example, with transitions, I kind of learned a it's not a hack, but it's it's just like the workflow. Um, and I'm sure it's it's probably the more common one. Um, like I said, it's I feel I feel stressed out about thinking how to do transitions, and 
for me, it helps a lot to pre-visualize things uh, in front of me. So usually I do a little scribble um, or a little mock-up and then I lay it out in front of me, either printed or drawn or digitally on, in, on my screen. And then I look at the two pictures and I'm like, okay, so there's this and there's this. And okay, maybe I can, if I twist the shape, you know, you come out of an angle and you zoom out. And then, um, so basically I try to find um, the things that that they have in common, uh, either color or shapes or, uh, but as, as, as you described as well, in terms of motion, that's interesting because it reminded me of how a lot of filmmakers are doing those filmmaker transitions where you, where you move the camera to the right and the next shot is carried on moving the camera to the right as well. And sure. you can, you can cut those two scenes together. So it's basically the same principle, I would say. Right. Yeah. Mm. Cool. So um, yeah, let's, let's see, let's see some of your, uh, let's see some of your stuff. Okay. So um, people can see my screen. Yeah. Yep. Okay. So, all right, so let's take a look at some files of um, the, the Catsophrenia piece. Um, so, in general, it's um, like, let me open this one here. So just people get an idea. Um, Just give the materials uh, a couple of seconds to load. There you go. And the so, tune look is the tune look is created in Cinema 4D, right? Or is it yeah, created right. as a filter it's, in After Effects? No, this is this is in, in Cinema 4D, and that one mm -hmm. is is basically really just just completely flat shading. So there's there's not much to it. It's basically just plain colors in the luminance channel. So it's self illuminating. There's no light mm -hmm. or whatever in there. And you can see, so those are the uh, 3D parts. And you can see that um, the transition I made here is like um, just from the tongue going. And this where before when I ended up in a completely like um, uh, in that salmon color here. And then I just continue from that, you know, and and. And then there's the cat rig, and this is me, by the way, here. I don't know if you can see it. I also have a hoodie on. Um, so, and then there's the cat tree, which is also 3D. Um, let's turn on uh, the lines. You can see it's all very simple models and very simple shapes. And then I render that out and uh, then I I do some some stuff in After Effects to this. So um... so there was this question about um, first of all props that you're a Mac user from Gareth, and he was also asking um, how do you you know do you use Redshift or do you output it um, into After Effects from C4D or what what engine do you use? Or at least um, did you use for this one or what do you use in general? Like this is all just um, for my tune stuff. I usually just use um, standard uh, renderer. Um, the, it's in my opinion, it's still the most uh, of flexible and easy solution we have in Cinema 4D and also it renders very fast. So for this, for those tune things, there's like things render between three and 20 seconds of frame. There's not, mm -hmm. there's not more to it. So it's really fast. Okay, and fast. and, and um, um, for more realistic stuff, I used to use um, Redshift uh, mm -hmm. since I'm a Mac user and I wanted to, to upgrade to, uh, um, to a newer operating system. I couldn't use my... Um, my eGPU with a mm -hmm. um, with an NVIDIA card anymore because there is no NVIDIA drivers anymore. And um, then I switched to uh, Corona for more uh, realistic stuff. And I also use Arnold from time to time. And oh, okay. Arnold I, I also used for, uh, for Tune stuff, but I still prefer standard renderer for, for Tune stuff. It always depends a bit um, what you do. If I have like a scene where I have to where a lot of lines get drawn, mm -hmm. like really a lot, a lot of lines. So imagine a city and this is all outlined, uh, a city with like thousands of buildings. 
then Cinema 4D uh, uh, Sketch and Tune would uh, start to slow down quite a bit. Um, and um, then uh, Arnold is way faster in creating the lines. Also, mm -hmm. um, Arnold lines are more temporarily stable, so mm -hmm. they don't flicker as much as, um, uh, um, as Sketch and Tune 4D lines yeah. creation. Um, so it's always sometimes you want the flickering. Sometimes it it, it helps to mm -hmm. sell the, the 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 sketchy hand drawn look. Um, it, again, it depends. My mm -hmm. my favorite answer to everything. <laughs> <laughs> so let me just um, uh, change. To that quickly here. wrap it up before we dive into After Effects. Um, so you use standard uh, opposite to so you know you don't use physical and sometimes you use, you use sketch and tune and sometimes just normal normal texture is self-illuminated uh, and are you using Cinema R23 or which version? Yeah, always the latest. Always the latest, okay, cool. Yeah. So, all right, um, here's the, um, here's the piece. Let's jump to that, to that scene here where you can see um, those like liquidy splashes on the cat um they they are not 3d they are just uh, um drawn over uh, this uh, so here's the you see the the shapes and they just get um get animated frame by frame if we show the keyframes then we can see here um, there's just a couple of them and, and just uh, just to give it some some motion smears, and then also uh, when it gets spewed out, then there's also again uh, shapes here. Those uh, liquidy shapes. Oh, let me just turn that to half. Then we have a big a quicker refresh. So um, and also when we go to yeah, this one I'm gonna explain later how I did that. This is mm -hmm. something that's um, yeah, that was kind of an unusual approach. Uh, just uh, I tinkered around a bit, and I I just found a nice uh, uh, yeah. I'm I'm gonna show it. It's hard to explain without showing. It. So, so here I, again, I, I I see you yeah. you render you're working with PNG sequences, right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I usually, I mean, when I when I'm doing like photorealistic stuff, I do render out EXRs and and, mm -hmm. and and 32 bit and stuff to have all the color depth I could could need. But for those kind of things, it's just eight bit colors and that's it. Mm -hmm. um, it's it's nothing. Um, it's just flat plane colors. So the eight bit color information in, in that case is exactly there's no shades in there. You know, this mm -hmm. is exactly the same as as you would get with 32 bits and you. Yep. save a bit in file size so um yeah and then there's also again those uh those shapes that are here that i get that get drawn over um i always just have to find the right layer uh use that this one here mm -hmm. again you see there's just a couple of keyframes there to get that smear going and yeah this is basically how i uh how I work, I render out like um, like like object buffers for for all the um, for all the elements or for the elements I need isolated, um, so I can quickly change the background color and 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 experiment with that. And mm -hmm. yeah, so let's open up the scene again in um, in Cinema that uh, explains a little of that transition so okay so here we can see that uh, that transition that is uh, looks quite interesting mm -hmm. and this is basically uh, like I said I just I just tinker around so um, what I do what I did here was I um, Let's uh, deactivate all the uh, effectors and deformers. So this is just a um, this is just a flat plane here, uh, subdivided um, like 100 
uh, 100 segments in each direction. So, and this gets uh, just put into a Voronoi uh, fracture object. And as you can see here, there's only one parameter animated and that's the offset fragments. And that just like scales the, the fragments in. So it, 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 it fills the space gradually. And then there's like a um, then there's a plane effector, and what the plane effector does, it, it it generally just pushes things out like to the front a little, mm -hmm. and that's that. And then I used a, a spherify uh, deformer on that, and you get this, and it still doesn't look very interesting. But if you combine that then with a uh, with a twist deformer, and uh, let's 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 take a look at that. So mm -hmm. it's 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 angled and it's it's um, it has a lot of spins, um, and you can see. Let's hide that again, hide the lines, and you can see that then this here is happening. And of course, if we if we look through the through the camera, it's a it's a bit closer, and that's that transition from the piece. Mm -hmm. But you can see that here, there's there's like it's not clean everywhere, you know, like it's not what you what you want in your final result. Also, there's some uh, there's some 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 stepping going on and and, and stuff. So um, yeah. This is uh, because the resolution is not high enough, and it, it just the poly, doesn't look... the poly count basically. Yeah, and right. it doesn't. It isn't just clean enough, and also like the connections between the pieces are not clean enough. But it's mm -hmm. it's enough to get you um, to get a to get a nice. Uh, it's enough to get a nice uh, motion, you know and uh, or feel of the motion you want to you want to have and you can can just i often do that i just play around in cinema and see okay um with a couple of deformers and effectors what kind of motion do i get here and if i like the motion i just take that as a as a base and refine that in in, in after effects so if we take a look here then we have that um uh transition spiral here um that's that and let's um so if we uh solo that layer so this is the rendered out uh out part mm -hmm. you can see as we go here we can clearly see the stepping here you know like the the the, the low poly count because of the, the stretching um and also like like things here you know, like the, the shapes are not really, really clean. So, and um, what I do then is I just. Uh, Hang on, why then, why was it why was it too small in terms of the composition? You had some, you know, it was it seemed like it was scaled down. Yeah, it was. Um, I, I just made the composition with a little bit more flesh around it in the in the end. So I'm more flexible when I build that into the main comp. So mm -hmm. how can I position it? Can I, you know, like put it a bit up and down left to right and i, I just have some more some more so, room to operate so this on. so this composition is actually a little bit larger than the full hd resolution yeah right, right. okay right and you can see there's a lot of like like uh, um, keyframes here and i just um you know like build clean shapes and make it all like fluidy and, and liquidy and um and then we have this transition and uh, in the main comp, it's then, you see it's, it's here. It then looks like that. Mm -hmm. So, and we get a Super nice, nice. Do you, do you, um, I, I see you're using 12 frames per second. So technically you animate yeah. on twos or do you, do you just render it at 12 FPS and animate on ones or? Yeah, I, I basically set my project just to 12 frames per second. Um, there's also like exceptions to it when I need some parts of it to be at uh, 24 frames or yeah. like I need a smooth camera motion at 24 frames. But usually my projects are mostly 12 frames per second and I um, 
yeah, I, I like the I like the style. Um, sometimes it's if you have, have very fast uh, fast motion, it's a bit more tricky to set the um, to set the right keyframes so the, the the motion is readable if it's very fast. But mm -hmm. you usually can do a lot in twelve uh, frames per second if you if you do it uh, if you do it with caution. That's a that's a very good point actually. That uh, reminds me of a talk that I saw from the guys who did Spider Wars. Uh, I was at Adobe Max, and then they gave like a super early sneak peek, and like all the directors were there. You could meet them and you know talk to them. And it was like s such a nice experience. And back then, I didn't see the film yet because you know it was not released. But saw the trailer and everything, and then when I saw the film, I was like so blown away. I guess uh, you too. I don't know if you. Yeah. It's and, uh, one of my all-time favorite movies now. Nice. Um, same here. So um, I'm sure you know that, but what they did, um, to, you know, to to balance that uh, 12 FPS um, problem, so to say, with motion blur, they were they were stretching basically the shapes. Um, so if you if you pause certain frames, um, something that you know would be like a like a ball that is moving from left to right, it is like a completely oval shape or you know, if you pause it, it sometimes looks very wonky and almost distorted and yeah, almost yeah, they, wrong. They, they also had this thing where they they had the thing where they had like a lot of camera moves and, and mm -hmm. 24 FPS, but the characters uh, um, moved moved at 12 um, frames per second. So um, and what they did there then, if you if you have a camera move with uh, 24 frames per second and a character that 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 moves with 12 frames per second, you get some sort of weird stepping effect mm -hmm. it, it, it looks like the character is moving like that because mm -hmm. it's always you know like it's always going back a little when they when the camera moves because it, it doesn't move for one frame and then it jumps to the next you know like and then you, you get like this kind of backward forward motion mm -hmm. and what they did there they they um they basically they, they made a script where they um where they just pushed the character constantly forward a bit on mm -hmm. on on and, and then it looks like a smooth motion. Mm -hmm. Although the character for the one frame, it doesn't move within itself, but it gets uh, moved a little bit in the scene. Yeah, so yeah, I remember that. That was that. like the, the, the classroom yeah. example, I think, or the yeah. room example yeah, they showed, yeah. Yeah, yeah that's super nice, yeah. Um, so, there was this question, do you upload at uh, 12 FPS or do you create it um, as a 24 FPS with internally 12 FPS or? I upload at 12 FPS. I, I I get a warning message on Vimeo all the time <laughs> that oh your video doesn't meet our standards blah blah blah, but um, it plays back nicely and it's uh, um, and it's um, not. I'm always like I always run out of uh, of my uh, um, hard drive space, so I um, I tend to save on that wherever I can. Nice. And still, it's good enough for a staff pick. Yeah, still. <laughs> Even 12 e FPS. E even though I got the warning, yeah. Nice. Cool, that's very interesting. Um, there was this question from Daniela asking, like, if you could achieve a similar effect, like this transition you were just showing with the Voronoi and the, um, the Twirl um, effectors in other tools, um, essentially in After Effects without using a 3D tool. I'm just yeah. I'm, I'm thinking like I mean there's a tons of modifiers and distort filters but I mean yeah the exact I, sometimes same sometimes thing. I use them the exact same thing would be probably hard to replicate but you can you can do this kind of stuff also in After Effects I mean there's a there's like a, a twirl mm -hmm. effect there and stuff like that you, you can basically um, try out things. Um, Again, I, I think you get the same issue with After Effects then that the the end result wouldn't look exactly like you want it to look. So mm -hmm. in, in the end, you would draw you would draw over it. But for me, it helps. I I, I I'm not at that stage yet with frame by frame animation that I can come up with all sorts of transitions and all sorts of motion like from the top of my head, I need some, yeah, I, I need something to to get me going. Once 
I have a general idea how does the motion work, then I can like add stuff to it frame by frame, but to to come up with a complete crazy transition just from my head without any experimentation first uh, with those simple shapes and with those uh, techniques, mm -hmm. I'm, I'm not that good yet. I'm just trying to to look at um, C4 uh, Sony After Effects while we're talking, um, playing around with uh, the shatter effect. Um, you know the good old shatter effect. Um, yeah. that basically, <laughs> it was you know, it's basically like a... the first effect I used in After Effects. Oh, really? Okay. <laughs> yeah. When I when I started, oh, shattering, cool. Um, I don't know. Maybe I can maybe I can quickly share my screen. Um, I don't know if that works. Um, we're just uh, giving some work for Tim here in the in the back end. Um, so, uh, I don't know. Yeah, it works. Cool. So, um, I was just playing around with this, you know, because here you have the shatter effect, the, the very famous, I mean, look, bricks and they're falling apart and <laughs> you can do a lot of, actually, it's not so bad. I've, I, technically I used it for a project uh, last year because it had to be like a wall that's breaking down and it was, it worked perfectly for that. Um, you know, you can you can create how many repetitions you want, and it's quite powerful. I mean, for for what it is, you know, I mean, you can do abstract stuff like this. I mean, it's like instant motion graphics right there. Um, but you can also change the the pattern to to glass, for example. You know, something like something like this. Yeah. And then if you take that, and I don't know, I use the twirl effect here, the twister effect. Sorry, but. Um, you know, if you if you bounce back and forth with, yeah, I don't know, and you could, could add a bulge and stuff like that, and, and yeah, bulge is a good idea. Yeah, basically get the get the same thing or a similar thing. Let's use this bulge here. Yeah, that's interesting. Okay, and then combined with a twist. CC. Do you use this plugin here, by the way? Uh, no, actually, I don't. Why not? Uh, I don't know. I've never. Uh, there's, <laughs> a lot of, there's a lot of things I, I never used and I don't don't even know about. So you would be surprised how many things I don't know. I can super like. I mean, I, that's like the one. The first recommendation I do, like install. You know this plugin here, it's called um, VFX or FX console. It allows mm -hmm. you to, you know, quickly type. It, yeah. I mean, if you want to do hue saturation, you just type it and then bam, you have hue saturation and you can, you know, recolor stuff. And uh, yeah, I definitely just, need to get that. It's crazy fast. I mean, speed ups your workflow, like, I don't know, 200 times. Um, but yeah, here you go. I mean, you can, you can create, I mean, it's not like the same thing, but for for a couple of seconds, you know, you you get uh, you get pretty pretty decent results. So um, yeah, yeah, and it's, it's it's just about getting an idea of the motion. It doesn't have to look pretty, even you know, like it's just getting an idea of how does this thing move, how does mm -hmm. that transition work, mm -hmm. and um, cool. So are we are we back at yeah? No, we are not back at my screen. Let me just share. We're back at your wonderful face. So, so that yeah, that's yeah, that's yeah. good enough for now. <laughs> okay, so now we are back at my screen, I, I suppose. Yeah, there it is. All right. So yeah, and basically that's 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 all there is to it. Um, there's again this uh, scene in the end where's a little bit of more of those uh, of those liquidy shapes. And I just, again, I just draw them frame by frame in, in After Effects to get those uh, transitions going. All right, then I'm uh, going to close this. Um, yeah, maybe we could uh, take a quick look at the next one called Joy. Absolutely. Just to give you a little heads up, we are uh, one hour in and we still have only half an hour to go. So uh, I think because uh, we were in, in our pre-talk, um, Sebastian was a bit worried, like, oh, yeah, we're going to run out of stuff. And then, you know, we're going <laughs> to just, you know, sit there for one hour in silence and just you know look at us staring. And 
Um, so I, I think I think we even have more stuff to show than we have time right now at this point. Um, yeah. So um, Angus says my mind is blown. So um, some good feedback for you right there. So uh, let, let's keep going. Thanks, Angus. Nice. So did we hear sound? I didn't hear any sound. Yeah, okay. So then it was on, on, on my end. I, oh, you, you mentioned that earlier. I didn't hear the sound either. So I was thinking, yeah, uh, uh, okay. all must be good. Uh, okay, okay. So um, yeah, this one is also, uh, it basically uses the same technique. So we can get, go over it quite quickly. So we can get mm -hmm. to another project then. So but um, let me just uh, open up the C4D file here. And that's an, actually an example for uh, everything is in, in, in one file here. So basically that's the, the animation here. And that's about it. And you can see that, that, that there's not every element you can see in the um, in, in the final comp is, is is in there yet. There's some indicators of that, partially with some smears there. I did with a with a volume builder and a tracer. So basically, you can just like attach a, a null object in that case to the feet here of the of the character. And then there's a, a, a tracer which basically draws a line and you can define like um, the amount here. It, it gets drawn for three frames at this point and it's also keyframe. So it's keyframed on and off. And then you just put that into a, into a volume builder and, and then you get those. Um, then it creates a mesh around that spline and then you can just give it the same texture as the boots of your, your, your character and, and that's that. And also you can see I have here those, uh, um, those hatching lines here. Mm -hmm. uh, those are like in, uh, um, in the shaders, that's like, um, that's like a, a hatch shader here and it just, just puts in the, in the shadow areas so i have a light in here actually that's not illuminating anything but the, that hatch shader so it gets mm -hmm. you like a, a lighting direction you can see it in the um in the uh, in the viewport preview but when i render that that frame here you can see that i only get those lines in the in the shadow area so the light is coming from the upper left here now oh, that's and clever and it just gives you that that cartoony cartoony look, and by default the the, the head shader doesn't, you know, you, like you want the seed to be different at each frame to give give it that scribbly look, and it doesn't look like the texture is slipping. Mm -hmm. So um, I set those uh, um, those materials to to camera projections, so they are always like basically the same. In, in this uh, I think we lost your audio don't don't know why um, so, and I used uh, um, a little expression here uh, in, uh, in the Cinema 4D, like uh, a visual scripting language here, Expresso. And I just offset the, um, the materials. Uh, um, we can see that here, like the offset V parameter, it constantly changes when I move it in the timeline, you see that? Um, this one here, and it and it changes, and it just changes basically 
the seed of the lines every time so they get like generated in a different place at each frame so it gives you this little wiggle then yeah right mm -hmm. those uh, those like this 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 intentional flickering here mm -hmm. and uh when we open up the the after effects file then we can take a look here so this there was is there was this question of um if the hatch if this hatching effect or this effect in general could be um, accomplished only with the full version of c4d i'm not quite sure i mean there's a few things that the cinema 4d light version does not have i'm not fully aware about the you know the things that it does not have because i don't use it because i have the full version so i'm not sure but where, where did you get that shader from the the hatch shader is it like a default shader that you can access or did you build it yeah, yeah it's a it, no it's a it's a, it's a shader that, that ships with uh cinema 4d and you mm -hmm. just have to feed it the right ingredients and the right parameters mm -hmm. to to mm -hmm. to get that look it's the same with with every shader like by right. default it doesn't do much so you have to learn how this shader works and what to feed it and, and how to set the parameters to get what you want Mm -hmm. So, um, I also have a, a tutorial on Vimeo about like tune shading. Um, it's it's a bit old, but um, maybe people uh, want to take a look if they are interested. So, um, yeah, and then here's again the, the very same thing. Um, I, I just drew over it frame by frame to get the um to get the those liquid looks going also like if we have shapes here that are uh that are drawn uh by hand they have like all the shape layers they have like a rough and edges effect to mm -hmm. get that uh to get those wiggly uh lines here to match uh, the the lines effect on the um that was rendered with uh, cinema maybe you can zoom and, in on that a little bit and also do to full res to yeah, maybe yeah, you can yeah. see that better so yeah let's take a look so this would be full res at 200 percent it just takes a second to... so the the rough and edges usually is just for the you know, it just makes it, um, you know, look not so, well, not so digital, more organic, but does it also wiggle yeah. for you? Um, or does it wiggle because it moves? So technically it's, it looks yeah. like it wiggles. It, it, it looks like it, it looks like it wiggles. I could keyframe the evolution, but you don't really right. need that because it mm -hmm. moves anyways. And you can mm -hmm. tell like, mm -hmm. and also this is like, quite subtle so you don't see it and then there's also maybe like, you, you can, maybe you can turn it off quickly for this one so you can see the difference yeah i don't know if i'm on the right layer though <laughs> ah i just you know like all the bunch of layers here and i don't really know which one is which and i, so. and I can see that you name your your layers quite well um you know pale green solid two you know which one that is right yeah yeah of course of course, no. I don't. I, I just simply don't have the time to name everything, and I usually <laughs> don't don't have to do this. Do those presentations where I, where I, you know, like have to find the layer. Let's um, let's solo. Let's solo the layers so we can see them. Yeah. Okay. Let's uh, let's solo this one here. I'm on. Okay. So yeah, we have this one here, and you see that's all only extending shapes, you know, and I don't use mm -hmm. them. I use a trick here as well it's, uh, it's actually quite good that we did that because you can see here those are like the shapes are even even open you see uh, mm -hmm. there's no this is not a closed shape because i right. only want i only want the line here because you see that's an extension mm. of, of of that one and i don't want want the line there so the i just leave yeah. it leave it open so i can modify an existing rendered shape to be something else, right. basically. So yeah, and when we just deactivate the the the, the rough and edges here, um, why doesn't it do? Oh, sure, I'm not on the right layer. Okay. So yeah, you can't see that much here because it's it's selected and yeah, but but it's it roughens the 
the, right, you, right. you can see that everywhere here. So it roughens the edges a little. That's actually and a good idea. What? Why did you use? Because um, in the in the first project you showed, the cats project, you were using masks um, basically as as paths, so mask layers, but not yeah. using shape layers. Is there a particular reason for that? Um, yes and no. Um, I I used to use. Uh, um, solids with masks more in the past and I kind of made friends with shape layers lately um, mm -hmm. which I didn't before <laughs> so mm -hmm. I, I know a lot of people that, that that don't enjoy shape layers that much and they use like solids with masks um, but lately I found uh, shape layers to be a bit more flexible in terms of getting multiple shapes shapes combined and stuff like that if mm -hmm. you use like the the the, the merge uh, uh, a path option and stuff like that it's just a bit more flexible and I, mm -hmm. I like flexibility i had the same experience i was super hesitant on using shape layers it's like what is this this is new i don't like it you know like because i just never used it and then once once you figure out the power of shape layers actually it's it's quite quite amazing i mean even with all the technically effectors that you can use like in a similar way as with uh for example cinema 4d yeah. where you can just throw um you know multiplier so you can even have like a wiggle effect on it that that has like a line and the line will actually the, the actual line will jiggle so it's not like yeah, yeah. it's not like a post effect but it's the actual the actual line that is that is moving back yeah, and you forth can do a lot of cool uh, stuff with it and now with a, a, a tapering option as well, it's um, mm -hmm. it's, it's getting more and more flexible. So, absolutely, so yeah. that's good. So, so yeah, yep. Yeah. Sorry, carry on. Um, I just wanted to real quick um, say something about like what I what I do uh, uh, look wise for those. So, what I usually add for those uh, tune stuff is a little bit of dust and scratches. So um, if we, I'm just gonna deactivate uh, that adjustment layer here and I'm gonna deactivate the grain and zoom in a bit so uh, we can see it a little bit better. So it's very subtle, the dust and scratches, but you can see this is very sharp now if mm -hmm. I deactivate the dust and scratches. And if I get a little bit of dust and scratches in there, it gets a little bit of a of a blur. It's not that mm -hmm. sharp anymore, but it's a different look than just using a one pixel blur. It gives you like a, hmm. it kind of, uh, it, it's just a different look than, right. it's very subtle, but it's, it's a different look. And th this, um, if we increase the radius by let's say three, you can see uh, better what it does. Like you see here, Ha, huh, interesting. It just yeah. melts the things a little bit together and it and it looks much more organic that way. And I basically all the time when I do those kind of projects, I use like one pixel, at least one pixel of dust and scratches on mm -hmm. there to to give it a softer feel overall. So mm -hmm. um and it, it, it helps to to sell the hand drawn look. And then of course a little bit of grain here. Um, always gives a nice vintagey feel to it, and then there's uh, always like a bit of color correction in there. In that case, it's just the uh, um, the saturation pumped a mm -hmm. bit up. I do that all the time because I export to MP4, and with MP4s you get a little bit of desaturation every time mm -hmm. you, you export. So um, I, I I counter that then basically just with a um, with a little bit of uh... hmm, interesting. It's 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 an interesting approach because um, I actually use the the, the blur um, you know the fast blur the fast box blur with uh, a setting of zero point four maybe and one iteration I think um, mm -hmm. so that's it's it's hardly noticeable but it just helps the anti-aliasing a little bit better so the edges are not so overly crisp and 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 so you know so digital um, and I, I I used to use um, uh, a grain filter um, I used the sapphire plugins quite a lot the sapphire grain was my go-to 
grain plugin because it's super fast because the grain generation is sometimes so slow um but um like uh, like a while a while ago um i was recommended to use um the regrain um the regrain mm -hmm. effects uh, or the regrain footage technically so i i bought some regrain footage and it's actually scanned scanned film um that has different emulsions like different um iso I, asa or what you call it um so it's um it's like it's like real stock basically and it, it mm -hmm. gives you that very organic um noise feel to it and it will it will be of course super fast because you just overlay it um on the on the actual footage and you don't have to actually calculate yeah. the the grain process interesting yeah you should try that yeah i give it i give it a shot um all right um then let us skip liquidity and just jump to beer yeah it's beer o'clock you know so beer o'clock Nice. <laughs> uh, I would say usually I would say on a German stream I would say post, but uh, you know, cheers, cheers, it is for here. Yeah, cheers. So yeah, this one was was very very fun to make for me. So um, for the inspiration of this, I, um, um, I just watched uh, um, the whole season of uh, uh love death and robots on mm -hmm. on netflix and um there were like a couple of very uh violent episodes in there which i enjoyed a lot and i, I thought <laughs> man i need to do something with like like monsters and blood and i i just was pumped about that idea and again i did not know uh how this project will come out in the end i just i just knew okay i need a monster and i need some dude to fight it and that's all i knew at the time <laughs> and the rest of the story just evolved while i was doing it mm -hmm. and yeah in the end it it even has like a like a deeper meaning to it you would actually um, i think uh, approve of it so mm -hmm. that's the message so nice. because um yeah i can explain real quick so sure. um so people asked me of course when i did this short like what is it about what what does it mean in the end with the with the other monster and and, and the beer and, and and why and you know like what does it mean is it the same monster is it is it another one and um my explanation would be this uh, think of the uh, human representing nature and the uh, monster representing or the monsters are representing humanity so um humanity is chasing nature chasing uh, nature trips over the pollution pollution uh, caused by the humans um 
finally gets cornered and sees no other way out than to fight back. And um, and nature fights back and actually kills the human. And another another human uh, watches it and doesn't care and keeps polluting. Mm -hmm. And that's basically what this piece was about in the end. But I, I, I didn't know until I finished it. Packaged so, in a monster uh, versus yeah, you human have, thing. You can and have beer. everything. <laughs> you can have everything. You can have beer. You can have like uh, um, envi environmental issues and uh, and monsters and blood all in all in one. It's possible. <laughs> yeah. So I, I remember I, I saw this one. Um, I think the first time I saw this one was during your talk. Some of your work I've seen previously. But this one was, um, I think, uh, the first time I saw it during your talk. But I remember you were asked about the, you know, like the production time for this one. Mm -hmm. yeah, um, yeah, you want to say it? Because I can't still believe it. <laughs> yeah, well, it was also like uh, roughly two weeks, a little bit over two weeks. Yeah, yeah that's just insane. Um, hats off to you. I mean, I don't have a hat now, but... Um, <laughs> you sometimes do. I sometimes do, yeah, but since I had a hair appointment, <laughs> I need to show it off, so. Okay. So, um, since we only have, like, a, just a little time left, I'm going to skip the C4D parts of this and just jump into, uh, and just jump into uh, After Effects directly. To just talk a little about about the the look, I think it's um, it could be could be interesting here. Yeah, let's let's find a representative frame here. We can um, see things. Come on. Do you do you go on an elaborate character development process with going through countless iterations of designing the character, having turntables, um, refining, going back at it again, or you just say like, all right, let's just create a dude and a monster and pff, whatever. Yeah, I'm, I'm not as elaborate as, as other people are with this, but I'm, uh, I'm also not, you know, um, I, I go a big bit, uh, back and forth on my characters until they look the way I, I, I want them. I want them to look, you mm -hmm. know, like it's, it's always, sometimes the process is, is quicker. Sometimes it's, uh, it's, it takes longer. It, again, it depends. Mm -hmm. It depends. So, yeah, it depends. Always, always depends. So let me, let me just find out that one frame here. That, that is, Something like that here is nice. So yeah, let's uh, let's keep it at that. So um, basically, I rendered out this complete short in 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 uh, in black and white. And oh, completely black and white. Interesting. Yeah, completely black and white because you can see here that's how it looks like when it comes uh, um, from. Or let me just also get those adjustment layers. So this is basically what it what it looks like hmm. when it's rendered from from cinema. Mm -hmm. And um, what I have here, I just have like a gradient with those typical '80s colors from uh, um, from that uh, bright uh, teal cyan color to um, to a purple. And then I just um, you see here. This is like uh, the 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 uh, the mode is color, and I just put that on there. It's just the gradient going going in in that direction here. So, and this gives me like that that typical '80s feel that goes well with the music there. And then I have an adjustment layer that's basically uh, um, a little bit of uh, um, selective color here, then some uh, uh, illumetry color correction where I just use a use a look on it and uh, a bit of you know faded film, uh, tone down the saturation, stuff like that. Um, then again, there's like uh, there's grain 
over it and then there's like a curves adjustment and this is basically all i did here for the um for the for the color correction and, and mm -hmm. the final the final look so um that's always like the the look dev process um i definitely enjoy the most in my in my work so that's always the most exciting part for me like to figure out how does this thing mm -hmm. look in the end i and i usually just render out a couple of stills and, and and see what what works oh and there's also like one thing i forgot here because where do i have this it's here because there's also there's the curves didn't i have like another oh yeah okay <laughs> this is because um there's a little bit more to it because i i have pre-coms here for everything so this for instance is the the alley fight and this is a um this is a pre -com. And in that pre-comp, I have again adjustment layers, and, and there's where some some other things is happening. So let's isolate those as well. So basically, I was lying before because this is how it looks like rendered from cinema, mm -hmm. <laughs> or this, yeah. So what we have here is a little bit of glow, and on top of that, a star glow, with, mm -hmm. which is a, a red giant plugin. So. And this gives you like a little bit of uh, like just a subtle glow to everything. And then what I have here is uh, Shine. It's also a trap code plugin, mm -hmm. and you can see that 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 it gives that that overall like uh, um, feel of there's light emitting from the um, from the background from the from the windows, and and it just gives you gives you some some light streaks. Mm -hmm. there and it just makes the the thing more interesting and then on top hey of sebastian that, yeah fällt dem designer nichts ein nimmt der shine <laughs> so that's like a german thing saying like if a designer doesn't know what to do he just takes shine uh, obviously it does not rhyme in english but uh, anyway i just had to <laughs> drop this one for i've you. heard this one i've heard this one before um so and then we have on top of that also again a little bit color correction a little bit of of, of mojo a little bit of tint then again the dust and scratches here i always use that use that as i as i told you and then a little bit of curves adjustment to to make it more more dark and moody Stuart asks and, for lens flares Oh yeah, I could have used those as well. Those are like uh, appropriate for 80s content as well. But you did not. I did not know. Okay. JJ Abrams would disagree. <laughs> <laughs> nice, very cool. So I, I think it's insane to do that in two weeks. I'm uh, like, it's, it's it's just crazy. Did you do a lot of paint overs on this one as well, or did you just just do the look stuff in After Effects for this one? Um, actually, I I did uh, paint overs, and that's for the blood. Um, mm -hmm. Not not entirely. So um, part of the blood is like made with X particles in in, in cinema, mm -hmm. and uh, but other parts that were more uh, specific. I mean, again, I I just here this for instance, this is just frame by frame blood here. Because that would have been, it's kind of a slow motion shot, and that would have been difficult to to get those clean shapes with X particles. You see, it's just like it's very very stylized here. Mm -hmm. um, but then on this part here, it's it's basically a mix. So this is like the base for this is X particles. And then I, I added some shapes to it and I cleaned mm -hmm. it up, you know, oh, and I made it flow here around the head a little bit nicer and, 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 and get some thinner sheets going with, uh, um, with frame by frame, uh, drawings. So, yeah, that's, uh, that's that. I always enjoy that 
that process when it comes to you know like um, getting the 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 last bits out of it with uh, um, with uh, some frame by frame uh, animation it just mm -hmm. makes makes the whole thing feel more hand drawn and more more organic. And, uh, I totally understand what you mean, but also the the like the I think you mentioned it before, and I I absolutely relate to that feeling when when you see things coming together in after effects like you have you have it already looking somewhat good in cinema 4d yeah but then again um like the real the extra the extra special sauce um comes comes in the very last part which is which is usually after effects and and to me that's we just we just finished two projects here on our end um two commercial projects where um i've been working with max and daniel who are um fantastic 3d artists and they did their job and i did then my job which was you know creating a bit more of the look in, in after effects and it's such a satisfying experience and feeling for everyone seeing it like like at the end like okay so this is what we were having in mind and this is what we talk about and then it's it's kind of it's like a super exciting feeling to to see yeah. it really in front of you come to where you wanted it to be yeah, actually, you know, some some people made um, made fun of uh, um, Maxon when they uh, implemented uh, uh, magic bullet looks into cinema. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, but I actually enjoy this a lot because I can, you know, since I since I have ma magic bullet looks, not on those projects, um, but. Um, I slap it on most things because it just makes things look nicer. Mm -hmm. I I always find a look that I that I like and that I enjoy, and sometimes I just use it very subtle. I just take the intensity down, and and you know, but it always gives me like a little bit of like that extra um, that extra feel, you know. Um, and I use this actually quite a lot. And when I um, and since I have it directly in cinema i can experiment with like a little bit of the the look directly in cinema without having to True. jump back and forth uh, yep. to 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 after effects and i guess you know if i like a look that i've created i just save it out and i can load it in in after effects and i, I render it without the look of course right. but then i can add it back in in after effects because i saved my 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 look from 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 cinema load it back in in after effects and i Still have the flexibility to, to, to change it, but I, I do have that 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 general look going right away, and it actually saves me a lot of time. And you have the option. I mean, at the end, it's all about options. I mean, you can still toggle it on and off if you want to, but um, sure. you're, you're you're right about that. So we almost done. Uh, one last thing I uh, wanted to point out um, because the the question came up as well. Um, was about music, like how, like, uh, I mean, this could be like another one hour just to talk about music, I suppose. Um, but are you, you're doing the music by yourself and do you record it in audition or do you do any post-processing or like... Uh, what Partial, is partially. So for, for this project, for instance, this was for beer. It, it's, it's such cinematic scores. I, I can't uh, produce them. I mean, some of the 80s stuff I could have produced myself probably. Mm -hmm. um but um is, this is this was actually stock music I I, mm -hmm. I I bought i bought like creators licenses that are quite cheap because i just use it as a personal project um so um and i um i bought those tracks from mm -hmm. uh, um from a stock music site and um for the um for the animations with a more like funky or dreamy beats, um, I I do them myself. So I I was always like doing music since I was like like sixteen. I got my mm. first synthesizer and I nice. I experimented around with it. And I I always love to 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 experiment with sounds and with. Uh, um, different different moods um you can um you can create uh with synthesizer sounds and and also um i do the, like like also sample based uh beats and stuff like mm -hmm. that and 
um, I like hip hop a lot, so I'm 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 coming from from that uh, um, culture. So a lot of my friends actually are beat producers and and, and musicians, and and um, I was always surrounded by uh, by that, and I was nice. also always a music freak. You know, I um, I could show you like weeks or years of cool music in, <laughs> in one constant uh, playlist and you would probably enjoy every song i guess um, yeah i think we have a similar taste i mean i grew up with with a mix of hip-hop and uh you know electronic music as well and yeah. dance and i mean we're about the same age so uh, obviously a uh, similar similar background and and i think it's wonderful to see it come together especially i mean if you if you have both the understanding of and the taste of music and you know what fits the picture um plus the added bonus that you have of being able to create some sounds yourself uh which just rounds up the project so nicely to make it like a cohesive thing because it's your creative direction yeah, that goes into not just the visuals but also the audio part um so i think that's very very impressive um so uh, just a quick tip a uh, question did you because we were mentioning stock audio um I'm not saying this because uh, you know this is uh, Adobe live stream, but I'm saying this because I've used it myself and I really love it. Um, I've been involved with uh, them uh, even before uh, it was offered. So I've been uh, an ambassador for Epidemic uh, Sound. Um, they do fantastic uh, stock music for creators um, as well as for commercial licenses. And uh, that is now integrated in Premiere Pro. So um, Adobe has stock audio. Um, so if you go into Premiere Pro and you switch to the audio tab, you will see the essential sound panel. And then you can go through thousands and thousands of tracks and you can play the, the, the timeline um, back while the music is playing. So you can, it is synced up so you can have a, pre, pre, um, a preview of your film with the corresponding music to it. And you can license that. And I mean, it's super affordable. And um, I mean, there's just fantastic tracks. I mean, everything hip-hop to orchestral stuff and you should check it out um uh so this is maybe can a you, tip that uh, you, that you have can you access it from from after effects as well uh not from after effects no you have to go through premiere pro right now so oh okay at least well, not that maybe, i know of. maybe maybe it's an idea to implement that in after effects as well oh yeah i would nice. love that i would love that all right. Um, I think uh, we're done with the time. I mean, if you want to uh, hang out on uh, on Discord, uh, the chat continues there. I'm sure you can you can find some more inspiration and things to talk about there. Um, you know, if you want to follow up with Sebastian or myself, you can follow us on on Instagram or Twitter. I think Sebastian is more on Twitter, um, very strong on there. You can create um, or you can you can just drop us a line, uh, check out some more of his work. Um, super super nice um artist work and overall nice guy i'm so happy to have you had as my first international guest in the in the, in the stream yeah I'm and happy. um i think people loved it me. um <laughs> lovely stream great content um everyone approves um as far as i can tell at least um so uh, any any famous last words you want to say i don't have any famous words all right that's I'm... that's that's the best <laughs> thank you sebastian so much for for being part of this um and for jumping in so um short on notice and um uh, yeah thanks everyone for joining for watching stay safe and healthy everyone and see you soon hopefully thank you bye bye